Alright ladies and gents, this one's going to be a short one. Welcome to lesson number 20. This is going to be our um, review lesson. And as you can see by the comments I've added in, I've kind of pulled the, uh, the last 10 videos that I've produced for you guys. And I've uh, went ahead and kind of summed it up and made sure that you guys really know what's going on. Um, what we have here is we have some um, some things that we just want to briefly go over and make sure that you guys know. Now, when we declare a while statement, we're going to treat it very similar to an if. There's a condition in here that needs to be either true or it needs to be false. So in this case, say I have uh, an int choice equals 1. So then if this while is while choice equals one, we're going to do stuff. Uh, and then I'm just going to say break because, you know, if we don't break out of it, choice isn't changing, it'll never break. Or we can do choice plus plus, or we can do choice plus equals one, or plus equals two, or whatever. We, we can get out of it a lot of different ways. Um, that's not really the point I'm trying to make here, but as long as this condition's true, it's going to execute whatever is in the scope. Scope is another word that you guys should be really familiar with now. Uh, these scope operators control when certain variables live and die. They control, you know, a lot of different aspects of a program, so that's very important. Um, for loops, they have three parts. Um, you can declare a variable in the first one. You can say int i equals zero, for instance, and that's perfectly valid. Just know that if you declare int i here, it's going to die with the closing scope operator. Um, the second is the condition of your loop. So in this case, we'll say i is less than 10. And at that point, we're going to say i plus plus. And that's going to be our basic loop. And as always, I'll just say C out, I, and an end L. And so that's going to just satisfy the conditions of our loop. Um, that kind of speaks for itself. Um, this, is, this is usually known as initializing your counter. This is known as uh, the conditions for your counter or the conditional loop itself. And that's typically uh, what you have right in here in your normal while loop is the conditional. And then I++, which is known as incrementing your loop. Later on, we're going to be using something very similar to that, and it's going to be called the iterator. Um, Iterators are a little bit different, but they're generally the same idea. Um, aside from that, let's see, we talked a little bit about, you know, how to ascertain certain types of data with our loops. Example, uh, we'll use total here. I'm not going to do average just for time's sake. Um, so we'll do total equals zero. And every pass through this loop, we're just going to do total plus equals i. And then once we're out of the loop, we'll just see out our total. And it's going to be perfectly fine. It doesn't die within the scope because we've declared it outside of the scope. So anything that happens inside of the scope is now permanent, or well, semi-permanent because you can just override it again. Uh, but it's a semi-permanent change to the, the value that is held within scope, or held within total because it's been changed within this scope of four. Um, aside from that, we covered that dangling else are dangerous. So if condition equals true, you know, we're going to kind of have an issue. And I know I don't have something called condition. Uh, we're going to just say the quintessential do stuff. And then if we do another if, and then an else down here, that's dangerous because now we don't really know which, you know, where that else is going. And that's mildly terrifying. Um, what else did I want to talk about? 
style, you'll notice that um, a lot of what I talk about is sort of best practice. Um, as you move forward, there are going to be sort of naming schemes and things of that nature uh, where we name our variables very complex things. We're going to be going from stuff like choice to, you know, um, I don't know, maybe like uh, char, and it'll be a character array. So it'll be character like bank name of checking count. You know, and that's going to be like 80 equals, and then it's going to be some long sort of string in there. And so that's going to be the kind of stuff that we're going to be dealing with in the future. We're going to be dealing with a lot more uh, things that kind of make it, you know, positive that we're using very unique variable names uh, and very descriptive variable names because so far I've been kind of half-assed. I've been kind of saying, you know, okay, well, you you have choice, you have total, you have, you know, these simple names, but in the future I want it to be very descriptive so somebody other than you and I could look at your program and go, okay, well, what is this certain function? And they see choice, but they don't really know what that means. So we're going to start getting a bit more descriptive with that in the future. Um, You'll also notice that everything in my code tends to be indented based on where it is in the code. And NetBeans does a beautiful job of assisting with that. Um, it's That's one of the big reasons why I showed it. I mean, you'll see that when we're in a for loop, everything within these scope operators is automatically indented one tab. Same thing with while, same thing with if. And if I put in another for loop here, um, we'll just say j equals 0, j is less than 10, j plus plus. I'll just toss in my scope operators and boom, it's automatically indented to here. And uh, that's not right because I needed a j or an int to declare j. So again, this sort of uh, uh, style is important. Um, it makes your programs infinitely more readable. To give you an example, if I were to just pull everything to the left column, or well, the left most of the screen, you'll see that, you know, when you look at it, it, it just, it doesn't look quite right to you. Or maybe it does, but it certainly doesn't to me. Because now I don't, I can't just look at this, this second four. I can't look at that and know that that's a nested loop. I can't just see it until you know kind of how it's interacting with other things i would need to check where this scope operator is and now imagine you're using an ide that doesn't give you the contextual highlighting so now i just see this scope operator and i need to go by i and see where it ends and then i see two here and then i have to see okay well what does this one correspond with and then you end up spending a lot of time and when we get into more complicated programs um I'm not sure if you guys have checked out my IDE1 account, nor are you able to, or should you be able to. But, I mean, I've, I've helped people on Yahoo Answers with programs that get into the hundreds of, of lines long. And um, when you get into really long programs like that, you're going to have pretty big issues uh, with, you know, understanding what brace corresponds with what other brace. So, I mean, especially if you don't have the contextual highlighting that you have, or syntactual highlighting, rather, that you have in NetBeans. So, having these things formatted out properly really does make a world of difference in terms of readability. Um, you'll notice that everything's indented one tab in automatically. That's because we're technically within the scope of int main. Um, you might be asking, are we always going to be within int main? And the answer to that is no. Um, in the future, when we get into functions, which isn't really too far off from now, we're going to be doing uh, some more automated type things that happen outside of main. Um, aside from that, you should really be comfortable with loops, uh, both for and while and you should be comfortable with how to control them. You should be very familiar with off by one errors. You've seen me make a few. 
um, you've also seen how I go about correcting them. Um, typically, there's just kind of a, a rule of thumb here. If you're going to use the number one, oh crap, and I hit F1 there. If you're going to use the number one inside of a loop, you're going to be making something less than or equal to. If you use zero, it's just going to be less than the number. Um, and that's, that's how I was taught. It works 95% of the time. It works great. I don't question it. I just run with it. Um, now with all that being said, I hope you guys have enjoyed the first 21 because, you know, I'm counting episode 0 where I showed you guys how to set up NetBeans. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed the series up to this point. Um, it's been a, a pretty wonderful experience for me making it. It's been a lot of work because I've done it all over the course of two days and I think I've probably recorded, I don't know, god, seven maybe, around seven hours of materials. Um, I've probably had about two hours worth of rejected cuts where I find myself rambling a little bit. Um, but if you have any questions about anything in these first 21 uh, lessons leading up to now, please ask me. It's absolutely crucial that you guys ask me how to better uh, better understand what we've covered so far. Because if you don't get it here, it's going to be extremely difficult for you to catch up in the future. Um, from episode 20 till about episode 50, we're going to be covering a lot of ground. And it's going to be in difficult things. It's going to be uh, case logic, it's going to be uh, arrays, array manipulation, vectors, data validation. Um, I'm not too sure. You can, you can kind of check my tentative schedule. Uh, of, of classes on U of Reddit, uh, node 198, which is the class for this Reddit, or uh, for this, you know, course. Um, all right, well, be sure to shoot me messages if you guys get stuck. Comment below if you need help with this particular uh, lesson. I don't think I need to really post this code. Um, it's been up on my screen for a while. You guys should kind of see what I've done here. And um, I guess that's going to be it for now. You guys have a great night, and I'll be here for a few more hours uh, if you need any help. Thanks a lot.